Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Inga Cotton. I'm the founder and executive director of San Antonio Charter Moms. And these are Charter Moms Chats. And uh, I'm so excited that today we're going to be talking about um, a program at KIPP Texas Public Schools called KIPP Forward. And what it does is it helps uh, get kids prepared for um, all kinds of possibilities in life. So whether that's college or career or military. And uh, to talk to us about KIPP Forward, we have the director of KIPP Forward for KIPP Texas San Antonio Public Schools. And his name is Ruben Rodriguez. And just before he came on the air, Ruben and I were remembering like just how, how long it's been since. Um, so back in like 2011, 2012, um, I would go uh, with my kids who were a little bitty back then um, to the first Friday breakfast that Kip would do as kind of a outreach and kind of welcome the community. And I'm pretty sure that's where I first met uh, Ruben was at one of those first Friday breakfasts. They would rotate among the different uh, Kip campuses. But it's been it's been a long time. <laughs> We've been at wow. this for a while. So, well, Ruben, welcome and thank you for being on Turner Moms Chats. Um, so, I want to let all the viewers know that um, there's a guest post from uh, Kip Texas that's on the SA Turner Moms uh, site, and there's a link to that blog post in the description of the video. So, if you're coming across the video first and you're curious and you want to read the blog post, I encourage you to visit the site or click through on the link in the description because um, there's lots of uh, great like background information and you know links to learn more about um, Kip Forward. But I'm glad that we have like the local expert on Kip Forward here yeah. to talk to us about it. Exciting. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so Ruben, um, just for, for folks who haven't heard of Kip Forward before or m might know it under an older name, if you could describe like what are the what are the goals of the Kip Forward program, kind of the way it's formulated now? Yeah, so you know it's really exciting because um, at Kip Texas, which I'm I'm super proud to work with, because you know they took on the task to become an anti-racist organization, and through that, you know we re-examined all of our departments and everything that we do, um, and to be more inclusive of all of our students, um, which is you know part of the part of the goal here is that we don't we wanted to make sure that none of our students felt like. Um, that if they weren't going to go to college, that they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't fit into our uh, previously named Kip Through College program, which seemed to be the focus, um, and it and it was the focus. And our our mission at Kip Texas hasn't changed, and that is to prepare every kid that that is that comes through our doors to go to college if that's what they want. And uh, well, by the time they get to us in eleventh and twelfth grade, um, then they can make that choice and they'll be ready to go academically or um, you know, they can definitely choose a path for their career that that's exciting to them, that that's right up their alley with who they are. And we want to make that possible. And so our our focus has moved and uh, we re we have redone our programming so that we can formalize the path for our students and set out those stepping stones towards um, the career that that would just make their life exciting one day. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's, um, in fact, so I'll just mention in the, in the blog post, it links back to, we have a whole enrollment guide blog post. So for families who want to know more about the details about KIPP, it talks about yeah. each campus in, in San Antonio, like the academic results, things like that. Um, so, and and um, it, that links to um, an interview I had with the regional superintendent, Ellen Smith, talking about, no, no. The, you know, anti-racism and, you know, kind of examining the culture and, you know, just making sure. And what I've seen over the last few years, KIPP has evolved into one of the kindest organizations that I've encountered in education, just very conscious of, you know, how to treat students. And I've, and I've seen that through the pandemic response, you know, things like making sure the students feel safe and whether it's having graduation celebrations as drive throughs instead of <laughs> inside a room, you know, just um, just like so much thought into each decision. I agree. Uh, their commitment was incredible during the pandemic, super disruptive uh, for families, for students, for, for staff and um, I'll tell you that Kip Texas commitment uh, went beyond students. It was to their own staff uh, and through and and for us to make it, you know, comfortable, safe. Definitely is the word, um, you know, for for the last couple of years on campus. And so we want to be safe and make it safe for our students as well. Uh, but yeah, even the commitment to distribute laptops to every single student so that they can, you know, uh, continue their education without interruption. Uh, it was an amazing effort by operations department, and um, it really solidified my commitment to KIPP because it showed the commitment to the students, and and uh, we agree on that. Let's let's make students successful. Yeah, 
Yeah. So you mentioned, um, or you kind of referred back to, okay, so Kip Forward is the current name of the program, but it's gone through different uh, yeah. evolutions over the years. So I was wondering if you kind, sure. of, kind of map that so, out. And like, so when, I guess when I first encountered it, it was called Kip Through College, but that's not even the original right. program. No, initially, you know, when, because it was a middle school program and, and we didn't have high schools, the, the program helped, our, our program helped to get students into quality high schools. And a lot of them were private. A lot of them you know, procedures and, you know, all over the country. And um, when we started getting high schools, then we realized like we, we need to have folks that are uh, prepared and have the experience to help our students get to college. And so our initial goal was KIPP to college. And then it evolved to, you know, our students need support while they're in college too. And so let's make sure that this department not only helps them get to college, but can help them be successful once they are uh, on a college campus. And uh, and so then it became Kip Through College and it was Kip Through College for a bit. And that's when I got on board. Uh, that's always been, you know, part of my work is making, you know, helping students, especially first generation students uh, find their path. And if college is it, then let's make it easier for them because for, for me and a lot of my staff, it wasn't. And we didn't have that support. And now I'm, I'm leading a program that, that supports the students and, doesn't leave them alone and probably they'll think it's intrusive but we you know we want to make sure that we're there for them and you know i i joke that one day we'll have kip through assisted living because i think that uh we'll never leave him alone you know we'll maybe we'll have our own university one day who knows but you know we are committed to education and to success uh, for our students and so um i work at a place that that says whatever it takes and allows me the freedom to create that and here in San Antonio with with my staff and our programming and we just charge forward. Yeah, um, people may not realize that like, actually KIPP Texas is one of the original charter schools in Texas. It was like early, early days and there are KIPP alumni who work at KIPP now as teachers. There are KIPP alumni whose kids are now little KIPsters, right? And um, yeah, like some of them are, are what like older millennials now, right? Yeah. Some of the original KIPP alumni. Yeah, in fact, uh, right before our call, um, I got a, a message that uh, we are we now have nine KIPP uh, uh, college students that are in our sub pool. And so, you know, so even while they're going to college, they can be become a substitute, oh, wow. which is a great wow. need for us right now, uh, oh, yeah. like every district. And so uh, to be able to to employ them in a place that cares for them and prioritizes their education, then why not? you know, come back and, and help us out. And, and they do. Wow. That's so, that's so creative. What great problem solving. Yeah. Yeah. So many, I've, I've seen the call, so many schools put out the call of like needing substitutes, but how great to get people who are, you know, we know they're starting in academics because they went through the KIPP program and, and they understand the, the culture. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's yeah. a big deal, right? They drink yeah. the that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, okay. Well, that's, that's a good segue. Cause like one of the things um, I really appreciated about the blog post was it, it, it talks about how KIPP Forward kind of supports different groups, right? And alumni are one of those groups, but um, you know, but there's, so there's current KIPP high school students, there's KIPP alumni, there's, you know, family, uh, family members, like parents, guardians, you know, caregivers for the KIPP students. So, so can you talk about like how, how KIPP Forward, interfaces with and kind of supports each of those groups yeah so uh, my department has three different sections and that the 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 typical traditional one is the the high school right where we have college counselors it looks different instead of a college counselor in an office we have two class uh, rooms uh, for for our juniors and for our seniors and they actually attend a, a seminar class with our advisors slash teaching you know uh, the process uh, so that they can get ready for for their paths um, and so a, a lot of the bulk of our work is there but then we also have a transition uh, uh, model that helps bridge high school towards college success because we know that the first two years of college are the most at risk for you know for them stopping out uh, and then we have a team that focuses just on alumni support and so there's a two year support person, there's a four year support person. And then we also have, uh, uh, we were able to get a grant from the KIPP Foundation to hire someone to help students re-enroll. And so we reached out to the students that left school 
Um, and, you know, with, with COVID, we don't have to go very far. You know, a lot of our students, like I said, it's, it was disruptive enough for them to, to stop out and maybe help their fam families financially. Um, and so now that things are, oh gosh, I hate saying this, but, you know, maybe getting back to normal, um, you know, a lot of students are looking for an opportunity to get back. And so I have uh, someone that for the next two years is going to help us uh, uh, provide that path. Uh, maybe it isn't going back to college. Maybe it's just finding a certificate program or, or something to help them out uh, to get them on their feet and get them moving forward. And uh, so we have someone in place for that. So um, I, you know, we have 14 people on our team now. And I think, you know, when I first met you, we had three. So <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, partly that there's now two high schools in yeah. in San Antonio. Right. It's, yeah. it's almost, yeah, it's almost has graduating seniors this year. Right? They have, uh, they have juniors. That, oh, they have juniors this uh, year. Yeah, okay. Next year okay. will be their first graduating class. Their founding class will graduate. Uh, so we have people in place there uh, to, to establish a Give Forward program with them. And then, of course, at Kip U Prep, our international baccalaureate high school, uh, we have folks there that have been doing the work since since uh, we started this in 2013. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I remember. Um, okay, so I know that the Kip U Prep campus has moved to a few different sites yeah. over the years, but yeah. um, during the brief window when it was on Mulberry, um, that I was I was living in that neighborhood at the time, and I got to march with the students. Actually, and yeah. my son was with me. Um, and then it was down to the the Laurel Heights post office that's yeah. in uh, Bacala. And then it was, um, you know, they were, you know, there's that good peer pressure of like, you know, like, well, I don't know if I want to send in my college application. Well, you know, if you have a whole like march of people all with their applications, all shoving it in the mailbox, like, how can you, how can you not participate in that? <laughs> yeah. Everybody always had something they need to, they needed to mail off back <laughs> then. Uh, it's not so much now. Everything's, you know, they're like, we don't want paper. Send it electronically. Uh, but that's a that's a great celebrate. We want to, you know, we want to help students celebrate their what they're doing. You know, it's a it's a big deal for first generation students, which many of our students are, uh, to take that step and to be brave to be able to say, you know, I'm going to chase my dream, and it might mean going to college or or a program, uh, or enrolling somewhere away from home or enlisting, and so. Um, in November, that's what we do to celebrate our application submissions. We we march down to uh, to the post office together after we do a little parade through the hallways and and let their you know the younger Kipsers uh, cheer them on. Um, and so it's just a really exciting way to celebrate uh, something to empower them to say, oh yeah, this, this uh, you know I want to be a part of this and and this is a big deal. And and then to be greeted by administrators and family and folks when they get to the post office, it's just an incredible thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the, the post mentioned also that, um, you know, part of it is um, having things like career nights so that, you know, students can really think, it's not just, like, I think I think sometimes there's a risk if like college is presented as the goal, because college is really the means to an end. It's meant to like unlock, you know, careers that have entry barriers. That's right. Um, you know, but the, the real goal is to have meaningful work, you know, where you're compensated, but you, you also feel like you're giving back to your community and. Um, you know, and, and it gives me help to be able to envision like what those what those possibilities are. And it, it may or may not involve college, right? The goal is a meaningful career. And some careers, college is the gatekeeper and some it's not. So there's it's a different type of program. That's absolutely right. And, you know, that's how that's how our uh, our vision for creating an 11th grade seminar class started, is that we, we our focus for 12th grade is application submission, wherever you whatever you're going to do. Right. But 11th grade became um, the, the path for them to discover themselves. And, you know, they take aptitude tests to learn what their strengths are, what their personality types are, all those things about themselves. And the progress there is they get to know themselves better. They get to find out what their interests and strengths are. They find out what kind of careers would be applicable to them, the best path for them, the easiest path based on their natural abilities. And then they find majors and or programs. And if it's a major at a college and they find out what college and by the time they finish 11th grade, they, they have their plan set so that they can go right into 12th grade. Ready to ready to, to make the to, to make that transition over. Yeah, I, I say as the parent of a 14 year old 
you know, I'm kind of, you know, looking ahead and like, I've asked questions at, at my son's school, like, you know, okay, what does this counseling program do? And, you know, I'm, I'm always happy when I find out about, you know, these, these options where like, it's not just like, okay, here's fill out this form, you know, here's the, the deadline is this, okay, bye. You know, no, there's a lot more to it. There's, there you know, like things, things like, you know, doing community service or having internships that, you know, where you get some hands-on experience of like, maybe you think you like it, but maybe you should, you know, dip your toe in before you commit to, you know, paying tuition and, and investing your time in a degree program. Yeah, no, it's true. And it, it's, you know, we, like I said, we, of course, I went to college when everything was paper and everything took a <laughs> long, long time. Um, but even now, even as a parent, you know, when my daughter was enrolling at, in North Texas, it was, uh, I was like, I, I haven't done this myself in so long, you know, and I needed help from my staff. I'm like, what am I forgetting? And and I became one of those parents that they had to push to say, you got to do your financial aid up again. I'm like, I know, I know. Um, and so, you know, the support is there. Um, our, our support for our, it extends beyond the students. And you touched on this briefly. Um, you know, we we haven't had an opportunity. We typically, historically, we've been able to stay longer after school, you know, to, to to accommodate parents that want to come on campus and learn more about what's happening. Uh, we've been able to have career fairs, college fairs, so that, you know, students can can hear from the experts. Um, again, you know, COVID di disrupted a lot of that, of ability to do that. Uh, one of the one of the things that, that we did that was really exciting was to be able to take our incoming juniors uh, to North Texas overnight. And then on that trip, in, in a two-day trip, um, and I'm saying full two-day trips for our staff. Uh, it, it was five campuses that we were able to visit. And that is so meaningful to, to our students because it, it provides a frame of reference beyond what they might see on a website for a college or what they see on TV, what college is. So, so that when we say, you know, rec room or cafeteria or dorm room or lecture hall, now they have that image in their head, you know, and they can they can say, oh, I remember having dinner at the North Texas cafeteria and it was pretty good. And man, they pig out because you have, you know, have everything um, and and it's important. And, and, and in some instances, we got to do that uh, to Kings go with with students and parents. And so now parents would go with us and then they felt better about letting their students leave San Antonio because they saw a dorm. You know, they maybe they, they met professors that looked like their students and spoke like their students and had similar backgrounds. And so we want we want to assure the parents that, you know, we're we're trying to do the right thing and they and hopefully they get to trust us and feel comfortable. But if we can go beyond our words and and actually show them, then man, that's that's exactly where we want to be. Um, and and I look forward to being able to implement all those things back. Um, so that we can, you know, accommodate parents to to come learn the the most that they can about their students the, their students' journey. Yeah, yeah. Like the parents want the best for their students, but um, if they if they themselves weren't able didn't have the opportunity to go to college, if the students are the first generation of the family to be considering or enrolling in college, then there's there's just more there's more knowledge that they there's more you know, they need some reassurance. They need to be able to visualize, you know, what these things are going to be before they make that leap. And then, you know, you want them when they get there to be able to tell themselves, I belong here. This is, yeah. you know, I, I deserve to be here. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to be here, I guess. And that's kind of where the, the alumni support comes in, right? Kind of checking in with the alumni and, and telling them, yes, you do belong in college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, we have, we have formal check-ins with our, with our college students, especially our freshmen and our sophomores. Um, and they're super structured so that, you know, we, we can make sure that they're on track academically with their financial aid, you know, uh, with uh, social emotional, you know, how, how, how are they healthy? And um, if not, then can we make a referral for them? You know, do we need to uh, advocate for them? And uh, it, the, all those support pieces are in place. And um, I'm super fortunate that our team is committed to ensuring that that our students are are safe on campus, that they're on on track, that they're not spinning their wheels, uh, and that they're ready to enroll the next semester. Uh, so all those pieces are are, are important, um, and um, it, it's all them though, right? We're just in place, just in case. Right, right. And you you mentioned that um, because of the Kip Foundation, you were able to bring in extra staff to 
you know, so if there are, are students who, you know, step back from college because of the pandemic causing disruption, right? Like having to work to support family members or, yeah. um, you know, just like not able to travel safely, um, you know, that like if, you know, again, knock on wood, like if, you know, if, if the world is stabilizing, you know, maybe, maybe now's the time for them to, you know, either go back into a college program if that's still their goal or they can take what they've learned and, you know, figure out is there, is there some other program, but they, you know, Give forward is there to check in with them and and yeah. give them advice that they need. Yeah, and, and in fact, uh, Kip Foundation uh, did an amazing job of uh, raising funds uh, to provide for students, um, so that when they would tell us, you know, I I, I can't go back because I have a hold, or I'm going to have to stop out because they, you know, my job is gone and I was helping pay for college, and and so they, you know, they they allotted us some micro grants. And so, you know, in one instance, I had a student that had worked two jobs, uh, paying his way through college, and then was in his last semester where he ran out of financial aid. So in case you guys didn't know, you could run out of financial aid. There's a certain amount of time for you to use it. Um, and he was going to have to wait and graduate in the next semester. And uh, he applied for that grant. And I was able to um, just, you know, pay his bill and say all right you know go go finish and oh. and he finished and you know he's uh uh he's he's actually working at, at kip texas san antonio right now so it, it's really exciting to be able to do that we we've never had the resources to do that inca um and and the a bright spot of this pandemic has been the uh, the ability to to uh, find people that that are compassionate and share their finances so that we can do things like that. Yeah, yeah. So you fill those, fill those gaps. You know, but the the essential piece though is the relationships that that you and your team have with the students. You know, like doing those check ins and and you know knowing what the challenges are that the students are facing, so that they're not just suffering alone. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, and it, it's uh, you know when when I hire my college uh, facing staff, I tell them I'm like I know your day is supposed to be eight thirty to five ish, but you know what um they're not going to call you at between 8 and 10 a.m so just get ready for those 9 8 9 p.m calls 10 p.m calls um and they get them and in the you know i would say the majority the vast majority of time uh they've taken those calls from those students just to make sure uh that they're okay yeah yeah i think i think any parent knows that Sometimes your uh, young people want to be independent, and then but then when they actually do call, it's important to be receptive <laughs> when they do want to talk. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and during, to... I think during the pandemic, it's uh, one of the things that's happened is that our relationship with our students have become deeper and created uh, stronger bonds because uh, for many of them, they just needed a, an ear to listen and be supportive. Um, as they were away from home, you know, during a really hard time to be away from home. Um, and so, you know, for them to, to be healthy in all aspects, uh, you know, even uh, emotionally it, is a big deal so that they can thrive on campus. Um, and so our, that, that's, that is one bright spot, that we've had better conversations with our students uh, when they're calling us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before we close out, I want to make sure that the families know how to research and find out more about Kip Forward. But I, I feel like you, you just have so many stories to share about <laughs> examples. So are there any more, any more, like, can you think of any, like, yeah, just examples of, you know, resilience during the pandemic or, you know, ways that Kip Forward has been able to support students or alumni? Yeah, I, I you know, I think about our student that, that uh, and it wasn't one of our students when we became Kip Texas, you know, at Kip Austin, they, they had a student that was in Ireland. And they were going to close the airport and all this stuff. And um, and uh, I believe the story is that that our CEO intervened with her credit card to make sure that student got on a plane before they shut down the airport. You know, it, it's things like that to to make sure that we're aware of our students. Um, you know, we've driven students to Pennsylvania. One of our school leaders did that here at Kip Texas San Antonio, and um, you know, where where it was gonna it was gonna be really a hardship for her. You know, she got. To, into Pennsylvania and and to be able to go and, and and to go with them and hold their hand. What parent wouldn't be relieved that oh the principal's taking them, you know? <laughs> um, and so you know it, it's those things that that are important and it is it, it's important for them to trust us 
Uh, it's not easy for someone to say, hey, I lost my job or my parents lost my job, you know, lost their job. And um, I just can't afford to do this. And then, you know, we then now right now we can get into action and say there's funds and, and we can help. Yeah. And so uh, we try to do that. Um, and for some, it's just given, you know, lending our voice to ensure that an appeal goes through you know, so that um, they so that they can get in or so they can be patient with paperwork that seems to get lost over and over and over again. <laughs> um, and so a lot of, you know, a lot of times it's advocacy and a lot of times is, but we always start with making sure that the student gets to use their own voice first. And then, and then if we need to step in, we can and we will. Uh, and we want to, you know, we want to solve it from the go, you know, but, but we know it's important for our students to be able to to do that and build that in emotional intelligence to be able to to advocate for themselves. So um, it's a lot. It's a lot, and um, you know, like I said, it's it's been a, a stressful time uh, for many of the students. You know, even last year and this year is just like, what's it going to look like next year? And we're like, we don't know. It's a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, but but w what we know is that we're here, and you know, right now we're we're actively. You know, it's recruitment time for for our schools. And, you know, if what we know is that if they go through the middle school and then they come to our high schools, um, that we will be there in place to put all the all the pieces together for them of whatever they want to do. And that can be from the simple ones where they, you know, engineering or, you know, that that they want to do for our, our math whizzes, you know, to, you know, we have a senior right now. He wants to be the next Walt Disney. And how do we figure that out? You know, is it college? Is it, you know, is, is it YouTube fame? You know, we don't know. So we get to explore those things with our students and that's the commitment that we're making to, to all of our students. Yeah. Yeah. We, that, that's so important to like, to, to see each student as an individual and not just as like a checklist of like, Oh, we have to get all these people into college. It's like, no, each, each student is an individual. They have their own dreams and, and Kim Forward wants to support them with that, whether, whether it's college or the military, or, you know, if there's some other kind of training yeah. that they need. Yeah. And even I'll, I'll tell you that, um, I'll add that even with our military, it's not just, Oh, okay. Checklist. It's, I think I want to go military. And I, and one of my staff members, Tony, he, he'll go with them to the recruiter's office and he'll sit there and, and, and say, you know, tell him he may be deployed, tell him everything that that student needs to be fully informed of, you know, they're going to walk out and that student before him or him and his parents or he, her and her parents sign that letter, they're going to be well informed of what to expect. And, and so there's going to be no surprises. Um, and even beyond that, what is the career that you want through the military? You know, I want to refuel jets in, in, on flight. OK, you know, what is it going to take for you to be that? Um, and so uh, even the military ha is, has um, added to our uh you know in our programming to make sure that it becomes a career yeah yeah well i'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that yeah i mean a big part of what sh hormones does is helping families know like what's unique about the different school options in san antonio because we, we cover so many schools they have so many unique aspects but um i feel like that kip forward is is one of the great strengths of the kip program that you know it, it carries students you know all the way through you know, into the later years of high school where they need this support to, you know, think about different career possibilities and, you know, getting getting through all that, all that paperwork or, you know, all those online applications, um, you know, and like, you know, helping. So it's not, it's not just like, oh, we got the 12th grade, we're done. No, there's, right. there's more to it. Yeah. And, yeah. And then, you know, I looked on my list and I see students that have submitted 23 applications and I'm oh. going, holy man, it, it, it's, you know, what an opportunity because we're all about options right we want them to get in the next couple of months they're going to get responses they're going to get award letters of finances you know we've uh we make sure that our students are ready to go and that they can apply for their scholarships and you know a couple of years ago students were offered 25 million dollars right 180 seniors 25 million dollars in offers from institutions alone um and this year you know we're almost at a million and so it, it's starting and, uh, and you know, we're, we're just excited to see uh, what kind of opportunities our students get. 
Yeah, that's one of the fun things about following like Kip on social media is is all the all the attention and all the celebration on on students succeeding and, yes. and they're, where they're going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Helping absolutely. to launch another generation of successful people. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. And for them to come back if they want to and be a part of Kip, and it's just a big circle. Yeah, yeah. Well, wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to put some of the links up on the screen so folks can research more. So the, like to find out about Kip Forward, it's kiptexas.org slash kip hyphen forward. Um, and then just that kiptexas.org, um, you know, that's got links to folks who learn more about the schools and and do the, the application. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I think, has the lottery happened already? No, we're, we're pre no. Uh, February okay. 14th is the deadline for oh. pre-lottery. That's just so, around the corner. I yeah. should check that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so still trying to get into an open enrollment. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah. Um, yeah. And there and there's multiple campuses um, in in San Antonio, and you know there's Kip campuses in many states across the U.S. So and actually Kip Kip Forward is something that that there's 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 Rubens in other cities as well, right? Directing Kip yeah. Forward. For those students. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're as good looking, but they're there. <laughs> Or as as caring and as experienced. Yeah, that's you, what you I mean. Your, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ruben. Thank you for um, you know helping you know explain to the community about what Kip Forward does and you know the many these are amazing stories of resilience during the pandemic. Thank you, Inga. I appreciate it, and it's good to see you again. Thanks for being a supporter for all these years. So it's good to see a familiar face here. It made it a lot easier. <laughs> Good, good. Okay. All right. Take care, Ruben. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye.